while, Paulette with Back to Basics Mom and SP Gifts say today I am going to show you um, how I make my cup turner arms. So I have a couple of different sizes. Sorry about if I got wires in the way there. Um, this is my favorite like all purpose size, but I just got an order to do a bunch of 30 ounce and these need a little modifying. I do like to use the large footballs you can get at Dollar Tree as well. Um, I ran out of those and they're already all in other cups. So instead of going and buying more footballs, I'm like, okay, how can I modify what I have? And I had this, I've had this pool noodle for a while. I do not love to use pool noodles for my arms, but when you add a little bit of grippy shelf liner from Dollar Tree, it helps a lot. So um, it worked out really well. So, and I've been wanting to do a new video on how I make my arms for a while. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. So I'm gonna show you how to make this using these, some, I'm gonna show you how to cut PVC and just basically how I do it. So let's get down to work. So the first thing we need to do is we need to cut our PVC. Now, the length of your PVC is gonna depend on your turner. Um, so you're gonna have to kind of look at, you know, how long it needs to be, how yours sits, all that. So with my new setup, with my new turner I've made, um, actually need having mine just a tidge bit shorter than my older ones is good, although they'll still work. So most of my normal ones I make, um, this is one I'm converting. So I cut my PVC at 11 inches. You're also gonna need these little, um, female to male pieces, and I use three quarter inch PVC. You can use half inch, I prefer the three quarter. It feels better in my hand. My hand doesn't get tired as fast. So I cut mine to 11 inches because that's where I have found works best for me. And I can use that in just about all my cups, but the only one it's a little tough on is the 40 ounce curve from hog. So that one, it's a little short. So I have one or two that are a little bit longer. Even the um, 30 ounce skinnies, it works pretty well. So I just use a marker, permanent works best. And I mark my PVC at 11 inches. Now, when I first started this, I used to cut PVC with a hacksaw. I use the, um, the chop saw. Those will work just fine if you have those. But the best invest, one of the best investments I ever made um, for my cut business was this. Now, it is about $20. And for a long time, I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's too big of an expense. I don't want it. It is a lifesaver. It is so quick and easy. So it's a ratcheting tool. So it's going to be loud. So it just pops open like that. This happens to be a two and a half inch, which means it'll cut up to a two and a half inch pipe, which came in really handy when I was hard plumbing my pool because I had to cut PVC for that and my husband helped me. So, and you just are gonna, let's see, I got a bunch of cups here that I don't want to knock over. So I want to show you what it kind of looks like. All right, just click, 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 click. Sorry, I know it's loud. And you just line it up and then you just squish. If you don't have a lot of, it's not too hard. If you suffer hand pain or um, don't have a lot of strength in your hands, you know, you can always get somebody to help you, whether you have a, a teenager or a husband or something like that around that can give you a hand. They always come in handy. So I'll put that out of the way. So now we have our piece of PVC. So now we need to prep our football. So again, I love this size. I think it's really great for most cups you're going to do. It works in the skinnies, um, in the 30s and the 20s. It works in 20 ounce modern curves. It works in most 20 ounce cups. Um, I find this one to be the most well-rounded. I can beef it up um, if I need, if it's a little small, I can beef it up with a couple extra layers of shelf liner. Um, so anyway, so to start with these, you just, the end I just twist, and then usually it pulls right out. Some are a little tougher than others. Now this hole is not quite big enough for our PVC. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Now, 
I cut mine and I make sure my, I like my PVC to go all the way through for stability. Some people just make it go like halfway and then they have a lot of trouble with their, their cup is like tippy on their arm and I do not have that problem at all. I also am gonna cut off the tip and here just to give it more stability. You can kind of see if you compare, I've only used that much. Some of them I have are longer. Um, it just kind of depends what I'm doing. So and that's something that you'll find what works best for you. Your other best friend is a serrated knife. Any serrated knife will do. Uh, I used to sell Pampered Chef, so I have lots of extra kitchen tools. Um, so any serrated knife for cutting styrofoam is gonna help you a ton. Um, the other thing I'm gonna use, which you do not need to, because um, I'm gonna try it with the knife, is I have these little mini files from um, some jewelry making. You know, us crafters, we have so many different hobbies and things that we do. So, you know, find what you have around um, to help you. But I like this little fine one. You do not need this. You can just use your knife, which I'm gonna show. So I like to cut off probably a good inch on each end. So, cause we need to cut a hole big enough for that with a little extra. So the trick is to saw back and forth and do not push down super hard. Sorry, I bumped the camera with my head. I need to get a new camera holder. If you've watched my videos lately, you've heard me say that multiple times. It's on my list. I'm thinking it might be my gift to myself. Now, if it's not even, see, mine's not even. It doesn't really make a huge big deal if your cut is not straight. Oh. So it does not make a huge big deal. So then if we're just using the knife, I'm gonna try and go down through the center and go straight down. And then you're gonna turn it and we're gonna do it again. So we're trying to get to the center, which can be a little bit of a challenge. Now, if you have anything that's straight and pointed, like this is a skewer, because we need to try to find the center. And I'm trying to do this with tools that you might have. And you can kind of eyeball. That looks pretty good as far as the center goes. We just kind of want a, a reference. This is where that little, um, that little file is really handy for doing this and it's a lot cleaner, but we are gonna just do the best we can. So I am really sorry about the wiggling camera. So we're just gonna, and you're better to start taking out a little than to take out too much, <coughs> excuse me. And then you're just gonna stick your finger in there. You know, wiggle it around, kind of, I'm kind of pulling my fingers towards me, the fingers that are inside kind of towards me to kind of stretch that out. And we're gonna try and just dig some of that out of there with our fingers. See, now that we know where the center is, it's kind of easier to do this part. So if you hear a little buzz in the background, I apologize. I have, um, I have a new venting system for my epoxy area and I'm using an old, not old, but I'm using a bathroom fan. Um, I did find it new at um, Home Depot for like, I don't know, 15 or 16 bucks, but the cheap ones aren't super quiet. So I apologize for the hum in the background. Okay, now this next part is a little tricky and takes a little patience. 
So on these, on the end where the glue was, I will tend to kind of go with my knife and just rough that up a little bit because I want where that glue was to stretch and not rip and tear. So I just kind of rough it up a little bit. But then really gently, you're just gonna kind of, kind of put it in, I like push down, just kind of ease it. And I like to push gently and twist, push gently and twist. And you can even, if you don't want to rip it, I put my finger here. This video seems a little obscene if you, your mind's not in the right place, but I kind of pull it away from the pipe as I'm pushing it through. And you're twisting. Oh, see, there we go. So there it is. So then you can leave it like that. Or I like to add my strip of my shelf liner, which I already cut a strip here. This one might be too short, we'll see. But I just kind of follow, there's a seam line on the football and wrap it around. This one's actually a little bit too long. So I just do it even side to side and I do pull on it a little bit. I do this to all of mine because these will get compressed and sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. Um, after a while they will start to stay compressed a little bit more. So this is just electrical tape. I just, again, I give a little bit of tension on here just to help hold it on. And I just stretch and tape. Oh, where'd my scissors go? I actually put them away. All right, Oop, drop my roll. Good thing I got another one. Okay, so you can put these on whenever you want, but you can use either um, PVC cement if you have it. Otherwise, Gorilla Glue works really, really, really good on these too. So if you have Gorilla Glue, just use that. So um, I have this sitting on my table, so I'm gonna use this. Ugh, I use, sometimes this cover can get a little tricky and you only need a bit this stuff does stink so you're using a well ventilated area and you're just going to run around the edge it will take your paint off if you like to get it a little gloppy sometimes I'll put a little bit in there too make sure you turn that back down tight as soon as you're done with it and I put it down solid. I put that on and press down firm. Sorry about my grunting, but you gotta do it. It sticks fast. So you gotta put everything you got into it. So there is your basic arm. So then all I'm gonna do, this is a short one, so it doesn't really need this, but I'm gonna show you how I do it anyway. Again, serrated knife works great on these. This one I'm gonna do a little skinnier than some of the other ones I did. Just, again, sawing motion. And then I put a little slash in it. Slide it on. I find my shelf liner. I'm using some pieces that I had left over from another project. I actually, for this, I like to kind of go with the twirls. I don't know why. And kind of hold it and kind of pull. Yeah, hang on. So I'm trying to close that. Spot right there. Again, I apologize for the jiggly camera. Like that. Here's my cup. 
here's this. This one's gonna be a little short for this, but you just push that in and then you have to squish these just a little bit. Push it down, push that down, push that down. Look at that, that is not going anywhere. It actually is kind of hard to get off, so. Um, but then you just pull it. It was a little tough to get off because it's nice and tight and fresh. But anyway, that is the way I make my basic arms for my cups and a way to adapt them. One Number one best thing I can recommend, shelf liner. Shelf liner can fix so many problems. So, and I like for all of my stuff, um, all of my arms, everything to be inside the rim. I see a lot of people that have um, their pool noodles and stuff, everything sticking way out and then epoxy gets on it and stuff. I don't like that. I, it's too much of a, it's too much of a headache for me. So I, none of mine stick out of the cup. No footballs stick out the end, nothing. So it might come to like, you know, right here, but nothing sticks out. Cause I'm super careful if you haven't, um, I've showed in a couple other videos, I think, how I apply my epoxy, how I kind of go like this and I kind of pull my finger up. So I generally almost never get epoxy inside my rim. Um, and I, I don't have a lot of problem with my rims at the top. I have a couple of different videos um, where I show that a little bit. But basically when I'm putting my epoxy on, I go like this and then at the end, I just kind of like I go right to the edge, but instead of going down, I kind of bring my hand up if you can kind of get that. So a little tip there too. So I think that is all for me today. I hope you have a great day. Find something crafty to do and keep on watching. I'm going to have some videos of my, how I've updated my work area pretty soon. And yeah, thanks so much. I'd love it if you'd click, click subscribe and hit the like button and that's it. Have a good day. Bye-bye.